All right, I've been doing a lot of pep talks. I've been doing a lot of motivational speaking, but I want to get back to some of the basic stuff, the MMT basics. I know some of you have been asking me here to comment on certain things. I had one person ask me to uh, talk about uh, central banking. I thought that's a good place to start, basic thing, right? So let's talk about uh, the Fed, central bank. By the way, a lot of people have, um, you know, the wrong understanding of central banks, their function, a flawed understanding of monetary policy, of open market operations, that sort of stuff. So let's start with that. First thing, Fed is a bank, just like any other bank, and banks lend. That's what they do. They lend money. So the Fed can lend open-ended, but it lends against collateral. When it lends to banks in the Federal Reserve System, uh, those banks have to post up collateral, and that usually means uh, treasuries, government securities, but all assets that banks carry on their books, those are regulated, pre-approved assets. The government, the Fed itself, and the Office of the Controller of the Currency, they they, they tell the banks what uh, assets they're allowed to have, and those assets are all uh, can all be used as collateral against Fed loans at some particular discount rate, okay? Now, it's interesting because back in the financial crisis in, in 2008, after Lehman failed, uh, and I was always saying at the time, you know, this is not going to amount to anything because the uh, subprime as a percentage of the mortgage market was tiny, man. There's no way it should have blown up the mortgage market, let alone the whole freaking economy of the whole world. There's no way that should have happened if the correct response was applied. So people who are out there saying, oh, I call, we called the credit, the market, housing market credit, they're wrong because they just got lucky. They got lucky in the sense that the Fed really kind of sat on its hands and didn't respond. And let me explain why. What happened when the after Lehman failed, uh, the Fed was only la uh, lending then to banks in a limited fashion against the highest rated collateral, which was treasuries. And there was only, a, you know, banks only had a limited supply of treasuries when everything on their books is already pre-approved uh, collateral, uh, uh, a, a assets that are you know uh, grant uh, allowed by the government, by the Fed and the OCC, and the Fed was not accepting that. It took Bernanke about four to five months. By that time, the the, the little brush fire had spread into you know a huge conflagration, bringing threatening to bring everything down, really. But then the Fed started to lend on an open-ended basis, unlimited in an unlimited fashion. All collateral was acceptable, and the whole thing stopped, okay? So the Fed could lend any amount of money, but you have, it has, whoever it lends to has to post up collateral. Uh, so every time it lends, right, it, there's, there's a net, you're taking something away. You're getting a cash, you're getting reserves deposited in the banking system, but something is being taken away, whether it's uh, treasuries, you know. The, uh, so you, it, it's kind of like I wouldn't say it's a zero sum, but the Fed. What I'm saying is the Fed cannot just write checks to people. Treasury can, if Congress approves that. If Congress said every American gets a million dollars, Treasury could send a check of a million dollars to everybody. It's not going to happen. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, because it would be uh, highly inflationary, probably, but um, the, the Fed cannot do that. The Fed can buy assets, all right, and it, that definition is very broad. If you look at the uh, Federal Reserve Act, it basically can buy anything it wants. It could buy uh, old shoes, and, and by the way, it could pay any price it wants for old shoes. Again, that's not going to happen, but it could. If it wanted to pay a million dollars for every pair of old shoes that it can buy, it can do that. So you see the Fed also has price setting, has a price setting function. Um, in its purchase of assets, it sets the price. When it buys treasuries up, 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 higher, 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 it brings the interest rate down lower, lower, lower. That's how it sets interest rates lower. Now, if you believe that price setting is an effective way to regulate output and employment, then I guess you are a big believer in the Fed's ability to 
quote unquote stimulate. I happen to think that that's really open for discussion and I think there's much more effective ways, direct ways, such as the government can employ people. The government itself can uh, engage the private sector in the creation of real wealth, infrastructure, education, health care, alternative energy, transportation systems, all these things. You know, if you look at what happened under uh, Eisenhower in the 50s, the interstate highway system, everything we have, everything, the clothes you're wearing, came to us by truck that rolled over the interstate highway system that was paid for by government printing money. So an incredibly valuable uh, capital formation there by money printing. The Fed cannot send checks out to people. It can buy assets. All right, so when it buys an asset, it's basically price setting, and it can lend, but it lends against collateral. So um, it's either price setting or an asset swap. That's it. If you think those things are stimulative, good for you. I happen to think you know that the jury is definitely out on that. Anyway. That's it for central banks. I'll think of something else for the next video. Bye.